Hi, this is Dr. Crutchfield. Welcome to the scheme presentation for dysphagia. Perhaps the most important learning objective is number five, the ability to differentiate between dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing, and painful swallowing, or odynophagia. Also, I'd like you to be able to recognize, just from the photographs that I show, what could represent an emergency in airway compromise versus just difficulty swallowing and be able to differentiate based on the patient's symptoms the cause of a his or her dysphagia and whether that dysphagia is oropharyngeal or esophageal in nature. I'd also like you to be able from the patient's initial complaint to recognize whether the dysphagia is a localized process meaning localized just to the oral pharynx or to the esophagus or whether it represents a systemic disease. So continuing with the learning objectives, first we need to recognize the symptoms, radiographic findings, and the causes of a Zenker's diverticulum. Then we'll discern what the difference is between a traction and a pulsion diverticulum. We'll talk about achalasia, corkscrew esophagus, and hypertensive distal esophageal sphincter. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is also a cause of distal esophageal dysphagia, as well as Chagas disease and a very rare congenital anomaly involving the subclavian artery is dysphagia lusoria. Psychological globus hystericus is also considered, and plumber vinson syndrome, which is a esophageal web usually seen in patients with uh, severe iron deficiency. Esophageal cancer is an obvious source of esophageal dysphagia, and epiglottitis can be a emergency uh, associated with not only dysphagia, but odynophagia. We'll need to recognize the symptoms, radiographic findings, and the etiology of dysphagia caused by non-steroidal medications. Drugs such as Motrin, Aleve, Ibuprofen, in long-term use can lead to dysphagia. We'll also discuss calcium-induced dysphagia as well as potassium-induced dysphagia. Lou Gehrig's disease is a neuromuscular cause of dysphagia, which we'll touch on, as well as the systemic disease scleroderma. Chemically induced strictures as a result of lye ingestion can cause long-standing morbidity and infectious causes of dysphagia from Chagas disease, HIV, Candida, or even HPV. Odynophagia, i.e. painful swallowing, will be touched on, and we'll look at some unusual substernal causes of dysphagia, such as a thyroid goiter or a thymoma. And in addition, we'll discuss what an upper endoscopy is, i.e. an EGD. We'll talk about an upper GI series, an esophagram, a barium cookie swallow, and why a speech pathologist would be important to add to the consultation. Here's the first scheme. This is dysphagia and we can see how it's broken down into oral pharyngeal and esophageal. Oral pharyngeal swallowing is that part which is under voluntary control. The rest of it is involuntary. This becomes important later. The scheme is broken down at its first nodes into oropharyngeal and esophageal. You might be able to differentiate based on the patient's history and physical exam whether the patient has an oropharyngeal difficult process in swallowing or whether the difficulty is down further in the mid or even the distal esophagus. Sometimes the patient will be able to differentiate by pointing to their chest where the area is felt. Notice the difference. Sometimes it's painful swallowing, odynophagia, versus difficulty swallowing. That's different, and they point to different etiologies. For academic reasons, it's nice to be able to separate dysphagia into oral pharyngeal dysphagia or esophageal dysphagia, but in reality, the symptoms often overlap and the causes often overlap. For example, Infections of the esophagus and the oral pharynx, such as a candida infection from a patient who's used antibiotics for a while and now has a systemic fungal infection, can present with painful swallowing or odynophagia, which in turn can lead to difficulty in the oral pharyngeal phase. This infection can also coat the esophagus and cause pain in the distal and mid-esophagus. Tumors of both the oral pharynx and the upper esophagus can cause dysphagia,
medications, trauma, radiation, and even systemic disorders. It's important for you to base on your patient's history and the physical exam and how they present, whether they may have an oral pharyngeal or an esophageal dysphagia, or both, called a mixed dysphagia. So here we see the first branch point of the scheme. Note A tells us the patient's presenting with difficulty swallowing, and then we need to figure out whether it's oral pharyngeal or esophageal. Once we've taken a history and physical exam, and that's pointed us to a possible oral pharyngeal cause, we then need to determine whether it's structural, neuromuscular, or psychological. And from further on in this discussion, we'll learn that it isn't quite so clear cut as what the scheme shows. Let's take a look at some structural etiologies of oral pharyngeal dysphagia. Inherently, some of these seem obvious. For example, cancer of the tongue or the salivary glands. The tonsils uh, deserve a little bit extra recognition. We've all heard of tonsillitis and that causes painful swallowing, but that's not necessarily dysphagia or difficulty swallowing. It's a semantic difference, but it can be important in the patient's history and physical exam. What if a patient has cancer of the tonsils, or tonsillar hypertrophy, enlarged tonsils, or inflammation of the tonsils, perhaps from radiation, and of course infection, mononucleosis, or tonsillitis. A zincrous diverticulum can cause either oral pharyngeal or esophageal causes of dysphagia, depending on how large the diverticulum is. Of course, proximal esophageal webs and plumber vincent syndrome and even severe gastroesophageal reflux disease, especially when the patient's asleep at night and the stomach acid can actually bubble up high into the oral pharynx, is also a cause of oral pharyngeal dysphagia. More rare anatomic disorders such as a substernal thyroid goiter can cause esophageal dysphagia and the patient can localize this well. A thyroid goiter can cause oral pharyngeal symptoms too. These are all examples of structural causes of oral pharyngeal dysphagia. Some other causes of oral pharyngeal dysphagia, for example, cervical spine and or disc injury or degenerative disease, radiation, perhaps the patient has had an oral cancer and now needs postoperative radiation. The cancer alone can cause dysphagia, now he faces the side effects of the radiation. Poorly finny dentures, a radical neck dissection, removal of the tongue from a uh, operation for tongue cancer, or even a more involved operation, an esophagectomy or an esophagostomy. I have a picture of this later. Direct trauma, such as being stabbed in the neck, can cause dysphagia. That seems inherently obvious. Or patients who drink lye or acid burns. These are caustic injuries, and these two can cause oral pharyngeal dysphagia by causing strictures of the upper airway and the proximal esophagus as well as the oral pharynx. This picture speaks for itself. This is an obvious example of a structural interface causing structural oral pharyngeal dysphagia. Here's some more examples. These are chemical burns to the upper airway and tongue. The picture on the left shows lye-induced erythema and a stricture you can see the vocal cords just below the vallecula, and on the right we see someone who has bismuth poison poisoning. Bismuth is a compound found in Pepto-Bismol, but I don't think that that's why this patient was poisoned with bismuth. It's difficult when you're taking your history and physical exam to ascertain whether the patient is suffering from odynophagia or painful swallowing, or whether they actually have a structural etiology causing difficulty in swallowing, and in this case, syphilis. These are pictures all as a result of a systemic disease manifesting with tongue lesions and oral cavity lesions causing dysphagia. Again, a systemic disease causing localized symptoms. It's important how you approach this with your patient's history and physical exam. More obvious causes of oral pharyngeal dysphagia. All of these represent cancers. Top left, tongue cancer. Top right, cancer of the vocal cord. Bottom left, tonsillar carcinoma. And bottom right is also another tonsillar carcinoma. All of these, I'm sure, not only cause odynophagia, but they probably also cause dysphagia.
dysphagia of the oral pharynx. You've seen pictures of these before. This is a Zenker's diverticulum. This is a result of oral pharyngeal dysmotility. If the Zenker's is large, it can cause esophageal dysphagia. If it's smaller, it can cause oral pharyngeal dysphagia. The larger ones can often result with the regurgitation of undigested food. You remember the pharyngeal constrictors, the superior, middle, and inferior constrictor. It's the lower constrictor where there's a natural anatomical weakness and defect that leads, along with discoordinated swallowing motility, that causes a Zinker's diverticulum. A patient has cervical spondylosis or cord compression can have oral pharyngeal or esophageal dysphagia. These pictures are very illustrative of cord compression and the MRI images are very clear. You don't really need the arrows to show posterior impingement on the spinal cord causing symptoms of dysphagia. This is an example of disc disease causing a structural defect in oral pharyngeal dysphagia. Our schemes aren't perfect and has left out medication induced dysphagia. However, the medications can cause erosions and burns and even sometimes strictures. Therefore, we've included it under structural etiologies for oral pharyngeal dysphagia. Let's take a look at some of these. The most common causes of oral pharyngeal dysphagia secondary to medications include the non-steroidal medications, Motrin, Aleve, Naproxen, and Tylenol. Calcium supplements also lead to dysphagia. Not only do they cause more heartburn and constipation, but these in turn can cause dysphagia. The tablets are often large and the increased serum calcium can in turn lead to complaints of dysphagia. Potassium supplements are very notable for causing burns in the proximal esophagus and oral pharyngeal and even upper esophageal airway. Again, the schemes do overlap. Antibiotics such as erythromycin, tetracycline, flagyl, clindamycin, and doxycycline. These are relatively large tablets and they also can cause burns in the upper esophagus and the back of the throat leading to oral pharyngeal dysphagia and some odynophagia. Other medications that a patient's on can lead to complaints of dysphagia. When a patient presents to your office and says they have difficulty swallowing, you have to do a full history and physical exam and part of that means looking at their medication list. One of the more notable ones that I saw in my clinical practice was Elevil or amitriptyline, Ativan and lithium, some anticholinergics, ACE inhibitors and alpha blockers, and of course the nitrates. All of these are culprits in causing oral pharyngeal dysphagia. You'll learn these with experience. The neuromuscular causes of dysphagia are well enumerated here. Let's take a look at some of them. These are unfortunately relatively common. Neuromuscular causes of oral pharyngeal dysphagia are relatively common. Patients who've had strokes affecting the cranial nerve number 9 or 10, affecting the facial nerve, brainstem tumors and spinal cord injuries, Guillain-Barre syndrome, myasthenia gravis, dermatomyositis or cerebral palsy. All of these can lead to dysphagia. Parkinson's disease, which is relatively common, can lead to oral pharyngeal dysphagia. Again, you'll be led here by the patient's history, physical exam, and complaints of proximal dysphagia, oral, oral dysphagia, or even odynophagia. Other causes of oral pharyngeal dysphagia, such as the degenerative diseases, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease. This is the same disease that the famous physicist Stephen Hawking su suffers from. Multiple sclerosis, Huntington's disease. Even a thyroid goiter, if it's up high and in the patient's neck, the patient may complain of a globus sensation, a fullness. If the goiter is beneath the thoracic inlet, he'll complain of esophageal dysphagia. And of course, cricopharyngeal achalasia is very uncommon, but it does fit under a neuromuscular cause of oral pharyngeal dysphagia. If you look back at the scheme, we probably should have a box for infections as a cause of dysphagia. But the infections and their side effects, for example, they can cause strictures or burning or odynophagia. These can all usually be seen as a cause of oral pharyngeal dysphagia.
and we've mentioned some of these. For example, syphilis, which is a systemic disease, can cause a glossitis. You saw pictures of that. Chagas disease, which does not cause painful swallowing, but does cause difficult swallowing. Herpes and candida, Epstein-Barr virus and mononucleosis all can cause painful and difficult swallowing. HPV infections and of course HIV can cause oral pharyngeal dysphagia. Then other infections such as a strep throat are actually more pain related than they are neuromuscularly related. Herpes and candida and even HPV again can infect the tonsils and the posterior pharynx causing a more localized oral pharyngeal dysphagia. Because of the mechanism in which some of these viruses affect the innervation, the peripheral nerves, we've grouped them under neuromuscular causes, but in reality it's probably better to put them under infections. It's not common, but you have to think about psychological causes of dysphagia. For example, globus hystericus, anxiety related conditions, or a dry mouth or a dry tongue. That can be a medical condition or it can just be anxiety related. It can be an immune related reaction. Foreign body ingestions, for example, pica, patients who eat dirt, hair. I have an interesting story of a patient who didn't complain of dysphagia, but he did suffer from pica. And on the way to the operating room, he actually ate his armband, and we found that in the operating room theater after he was under anesthesia and we had his stomach open. Anything is possible. Now the scheme leads us to esophageal causes. Once we've performed the history and physical exam and come to the conclusion that the patient may be suffering from oral pharyngeal dysphagia or maybe we're not sure and we need to look at esophageal causes, the scheme is going to take us down that pathway. Let's take a look at structural causes of esophageal dysphagia and neuromuscular causes of esophageal dysphagia. The structural causes are next. We've already mentioned the Zinker's diverticulum. Of course, there's also diverticulite more distal, a mid-esophageal diverticulum. These are traction or pulsion types. This isn't really important for you to know this at this stage of your career. And when you do your surgery rotation, you'll become more involved in what causes a traction or a pulsion type diverticuli and whether they're a true or false diverticulum. Not important at this level. Tumors of the distal esophagus or mid esophagus. These are clear structural causes of difficulty swallowing. Rings and webs, foreign bodies, vascular compressions. We'll take a look at this. I've never seen dysphagia lusoria, but I definitely found a picture of one. Mediastinal masses such as a substernal goiter, which I mentioned earlier, a thymoma, even postoperative changes, trauma, radiation, all of these can lead to strictures or other structural causes of esophageal dysphagia. Here's some very good pictures of cancer of the distal esophagus. It goes without saying that the patient can localize their dysphagia to the distal esophagus and would probably point to their xiphoid process. Of course, foreign bodies in the esophagus can lead to esophageal cause of dysphagia. Here we have a patient who swallowed their dentures, or a patient who has a couple of coins in their mid-esophagus. Even the stents that we put down to ease the symptoms of cancer can cause dysphagia. And of course, most impressive is a patient who has what's called a cervical esophagostomy, a tube bypassing his cancer, basically feeding him directly into his stomach. What's interesting here is the lack of understanding of physiology of the esophagus, actually thinking that the patient can eat and the food will travel down this tube without any peristalsis and make it to the stomach. I would suspect the patient has to milk the tube to get the food into the stomach. Today we wouldn't do this. We'd give them a cervical esophagostomy and a gastrostomy and probably put them on hospice care. Odd rare causes of structural dysphagia. Dysphagia lusoria and thymoma. The CT scan on the left shows a large mass in the anterior mediastinum compressing on the uh, anterior chest and this in turn causes compression on the esophagus. Dysphagia lusoria is where the, in these pictures, the right subclavian artery actually wraps posterior around the esophagus and you can see two different varieties of this congenital 
embryological anom anomaly. Uncommon, I've never seen it. What about reflux disease? Now this is indeed very common. It is categorized under structural dysphagia because a complication of severe reflux disease is the acid bubbling into the esophagus causing strictures. Also iron deficiency can cause an esophageal web. This is called plumber vinson syndrome and I have never knowingly seen a case of this. Tuberculosis can cause inflammation around the esophagus leading to the formation of a diverticulum causing a traction diverticulum. And these pictures which we'll see later show some mid-esophageal diverticuli. Understand there's definitely overlap here. Sometimes there can be partially obstructed and or other causes of dysphagia such as from esophageal dysmotility as a result of neurological disinnervation to the esophagus or dysmotility or lack of peristalsis which can then form a structural etiology. For example, a mid-esophageal diverticulum can be a result of nutcracker esophagus or diffuse esophageal spasm with, which then causes hyperperistalsis leading to the formation of a diverticulum. That diverticulum now causes a structural cause of the patient's dysphagia. There is significant overlap here in our scheme. These pictures show esophageal diverticuli up on the left. We see a lie-induced stricture with narrowing from a patient who has apparently ingested lye. Chemotherapy causing esophagitis. The esophagitis causing odinophagia and subsequently stricturing. And of course esophageal varices are large veins which occur in the esophagus usually as a result of a patient who has portal hypertension from cirrhosis or liver disease. The patient usually experiences a mild dysphagia from these large blood vessels in the esophagus. Here it is again, a Zenker's diverticulum, and if you remember, depending on the size of the diverticulum, will determine whether the patient has oral pharyngeal or esophageal dysphagia. And these pictures on the bottom show a not very common procedure and this is a diverticulectomy where they've put a couple of stitches in the diverticulum everted it sort of like pulling your shirt off inside out and then stapling across it in the right lower image with a large stapler this will save the patient from having their neck opened and having the esophagus transected in that manner our scheme now takes us to neuromuscular causes of esophageal dysphagia. Let's look at some of those. First and foremost, you'll probably hear a lot about achalasia and see lots of images of achalasia. We'll talk briefly about it and how it's treated. There's also more unusual causes and more rare causes of esophageal dysphagia, such as nutcracker esophagus, often difficult to ascertain whether the patient has nutcracker esophagus or is suffering from a heart attack. Diffuse esophageal spasm where the entire esophagus goes into spasm or a hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter which can sometimes look like achalasia. Of course if the patient's had a stroke this is definitely a neuromuscular cause of esophageal dysphagia although usually patients who've had a stroke suffer from oral pharyngeal dysphagia since it's the oral phase which is under voluntary control. Immune, medi immune mediated causes of neuromuscular dysphagia such as eosinophilic esophagitis and scleroderma need to be considered as a neuromuscular cause and of course the degenerative diseases and the medications and truthfully the medications should deserve their own category. The same medications that can cause oral pharyngeal dysphagia can also cause erosions to the esophagus and lead to odinophagia and esophageal dysphagia and a feeling of fullness or pain in the upper esophagus. The classic bird's beak appearance of esophageal dysphagia as a result of achalasia. This picture shows achalasia. The treatment for achalasia, and we won't hold you to this as a first year student, is an esophageal myotomy with what's called a DOR, D-O-R, fundoplication, 
where the stomach is then partially wrapped around the bird's beak, which we've sort of opened up by doing the um, muscle splitting myotomy. The important thing to recognize from this slide is that it's achalasia. Recognize the bird's beak shape of the distal esophagus. This is a classic example of a neuromuscular cause of esophageal dysphagia secondary to lack of nerves in the myenteric plexus of the distal esophagus. Patients who have scleroderma, this is more of an autoimmune disorder, but they also suffer from other autoimmune uh, disorders which in turn can lead to a neuromuscular cause of esophageal dysphagia. The schemes aren't perfect and it would be nice if we had a separate category for autoimmune dysphagia, but in the meantime, scleroderma fits best under a neuromuscular cause. Here are three classic images of neuromuscular causes of esophageal dysphagia. On the left, we see corkscrew esophagus. In the middle image, we see diffuse esophageal spasm. And the image on the right is a mixed picture where we see corkscrew esophagus and hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter. Notice that the hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter almost has an achalasia-like property at the distal esophagus. The esophagus is large and ballooned out because the lower esophageal sphincter does not relax. This causes distension and enlargement of the distal esophagus. You can imagine that this patient must also have pain in the chest. These are common causes of non-cardiac chest pain. Keep these three in mind. Corkscrew esophagus, diffuse esophageal spasm, hypertensive lower esophageal uh, sphincter, and not shown is nutcracker esophagus. So in summary, remember dysphagia is difficulty swallowing and it's usually broken down into oral pharyngeal or esophageal. The oral pharyngeal is the voluntary phase. Odynophagia is painful swallowing. A patient can present with dysphagia alone, painful swallowing alone, or a mixed picture. Also remember that dysphagia can be structurally caused, neuromuscularly mediated, it can be caused from medications, or from a localized disease such as tonsillitis, or a systemic disease like syphilis. It can be infectious in cause, not only like syphilis, but by HPV or other uh, systemic disorders. It can also be psychologically mediated. Patients uh, who have anxiety or suffer from globus hystericus often say that they have difficulty swallowing. These categories overlap. Keep these in mind. Also, it's important to understand that when you perform your history and physical exam, that children, for example, who have epiglottitis cannot have a safe examination of their oral airway without having an anesthesiologist ready to intubate the patient. You must be able to carefully distinguish between painful swallowing, difficulty swallowing, and disorders where the patient presents and they can't breathe. That is a true emergency. I hope you have enjoyed this scheme presentation on dysphagia. If you have any questions, please uh, email me or uh, catch me in the hallway and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions.